Hello everybody, so let's start our tutorial with this um, very simple thing is about rearranging notes. So in the beginning, as you noticed probably from my performance, I played all the way with my right hand, only at the end I include right hand, left hand. And in this part, I'm making this way. I hope you can see it. <laughs> And then I'm taking B-flat with my right hand. Oh, whatever. <laughs> okay, so now let's start um, officially our tutorial. <laughs> um, Alright, so uh, there are some challenges with the left hand, with the right hand, with the thrill, and with the time. Just taking my recording. <laughs> recorder <laughs> um, that so left hand right hand three in time that we're gonna talk about today and uh, let's start with left hand so if you play this piece you probably know that uh, the main challenge here is to uh, overcome the stiffness in the wrist while playing left hand and uh, so I'm gonna give you a few tips to overcome this tension uh, because left hand plays in a quite high octave, it creates uncomfortable angle in the wrist over here. <laughs> and that uh, leads to tension. So uh, try to shift a little bit more to the right. What I mean is that if I'm sitting, as we usually sit in front of, of these notes, then um, when I play over here, uh, very little space. If I move myself to the right, then this angle becomes bigger. So it's um, I found it's very helpful. Okay, next tip. <laughs> to avoid static in the wrist, move it gently, aligning motions with the melodic pattern. So again, we're talking about imagination. If you imagine right, left, right, left, left, the same way you move your wrist, right, left, right, left, left. Again, absolutely light and empty hand. Um, so again, when you're gonna play it faster, it will just create a beautiful vibration inside the muscles of your wrist. Um, so that will help you to avoid static and stiffness. To help the wrist stay again in a closed position, because again, any stretches <laughs> will create tension. So preferably we keep our hand this way. We have to move our elbow. Um, so we'll move, especially on the top node, your wrist would go to the right and your elbow would go to the left. Then your wrist would go to the rest, to the left, your elbow would go to the right. So this is how it looks like.
And the last tip is mostly I discovered when I started playing in fast tempo. When you play second note with your thumb, sometimes it becomes less even. So sometimes instead of you're here. So, and probably um, that's the reason also for the tension because you know you kind of want to compensate this unevenness with straining your hand. So instead of that, just give the right impulse to the finger muscle of your thumb. You're doing a through intonation of musical speech of unison. So here I will sing. And in between notes, when I'm singing here, that gives the impulse to my fingertip. So it's very helpful. And eventually when I play in fast tempo, basically the, the key of 100% of success in playing left hand without tension for me in fast tempo was focusing on intonating this unison and at the same time moving my elbow on the second note very quickly to the left. This movement to the left is very crucial when you play in fast tempo. If you're a little bit locked up here, then it will already create tension. So in my mind it goes basically and left hand goes. So faster I play, smaller I become, smaller I start making this sensation. And that would help me to control everything in playing in fast tempo. Still keeping my hand absolutely relaxed and loose. I'm not absolutely relaxed, but without, okay, I should stop saying that, without unhealthy tension. Okay, so let's talk about the right hand challenge. Um, so obviously <laughs> the challenge is to make a beautiful singing, vibrant, resonant tone in the right hand, making very good voicing and balance between hands. And again, I'm going to give you a few tips to do this. Okay, so first we're going to again reduce any tension in our melody because any tension always affects muscles. Muscle stiffness affects the touch, the touch affects the tone. So <laughs> if your tone is harsh, come back to your inner sensations. So to avoid any tension in the melody that would create stiffness in touch and tone, we first need to align all the external movements with inner sensations. Again, we are talking here about imagination. So whether you're using the vocal voice or any even pitch, try to make it with movements, try to make it with glissando. So in your imagination, you would go, all these beautiful small embellishments also treat like a melody with movements, with glissando. And after that, just make the same movements with your wrist. Left, right, left, right, right. And finish up with elbow movements. Again, to reduce any stiffness in the hand. And this is how it looks like when I play. And the next step would be to go through this two-dimensional playing to three-dimensional by adding intonation and weight. So when I sing and when I play, you can see the difference in my touch and all in all the movements. And after that make articulation. So try to make all this tenuta through intonation. Um, so between in between notes, the second half, the first half we would go with resistance, second half we would 
bring more weight and I found this exercise very very helpful with Tenuto if you I will put the exercise of weight in the description below if you don't know but basically when we going to come back and then lean forward this is where I start singing and my leaning forward note is my Tenuto so if I sing Sorry for my pitch. <laughs> um, so in the same way when you play, so if without exercise, it look this way. So beautiful expressive tone without any unhealthy tension in hand. Next, to make the touch and tone even more powerful and loud, imagine melody very loud when it's forte. It will help to achieve huge sound with no stiffness in muscles at all. Um, as I said in the beginning, our imagination affects our touch and tone directly. So we have to create this beautiful energy first in our mind. And um, so if our imagination is not resonant, beautiful, flowing, um, sorry <laughs> initially then um you know our touch will become also very narrow even though it's very loud it's going to be very tiny um, so you want to change your forehead to change your imagination first and then when you add voicing to your melody don't just try to play left hand softer because it will never work your right hand still wouldn't be enough and your left hand um would be lack of evenness so uh, instead of this just focus on your right hand and then you know left hand will adjust <laughs> so even if you imagine the right hand just imagine that you you are in the same room with the nagin sound you know and left hand somewhere somewhere else but even just um imagining that you're in the same room with the sound will give some nuances of intensity of richness uh, to your imagined sound. Even, even imagining right hand this way would be enough. And lastly, let's talk about the phrasing here, because if you're just going to focus on intonating everything per, um, properly with tenuto, you know, there is a difference between singing this way and this way. So to create less static, you know, to avoid static and create flow, natural flow in your playing, uh, you have to make the phrasing. So um, let's go through my tips, phrases and sentences. And again, I will show you how I sing and then how I play. So I'm backing off with my energy in the beginning of section and I bring more intention to the main part of the section. That's the main thing. So, okay, so it goes.
days the same way. So the first motif more important. With the sentences, uh, first phrase more important, and as you can see in the second sentence, there are gonna be three phrases. So, <laughs> again, try to sing fast to, to grab, you know, the energy of the phrasing. So. <laughs> Even if you're not singing with the pitch, the most important is that you get the energy inside. So again, when you play it, looks this way. the last trio. Oh, first about the paddle. Um, I've never tried to play using the grand piano this way, but at least on my keyboard. <laughs> when you play here, here you might change pedal, but the next one you can really hold on one pedal. It creates beautiful resonance. And when you come back to C major, of course, you change it again. So these two harmonies try to play in one pedal. <laughs> and uh, about the trill itself, I'm using one, three, two, three to avoid any tension in my wrist because it's really hard for me to play the long trill with one, three. And uh, when you start with slow tempo, Again, make these motions, wrist motions, following the uh, your imagination. Left, right, left, right. Again, it is important to imagine um, because most of the tension comes from the energy that we feel inside, in our inner sensations, and um, imagination is what let our inner sensations stay free. So when you imagine left, right, you move the same way your wrist just left right and when you're gonna speed up I don't know if you can see but the movements become it's just like a very pleasant vibration that I feel in my wrist Even if I go very fast, I feel it inside my wrist, I feel it inside my muscles, and that's what counts. Okay, um, I think that's about it about trill. I could, of course, dwell into <laughs> talking about harmonies and 
dynamics. It's not. It is important here, but I don't want to make it so long. And uh, lastly, let's just talk about time a little bit. Um, it's a bit tricky piece for for timing. So it's very important uh, that you would feel in a pulsation throughout the whole piece, and when you need to change tempo to menomosa, the piumosa, ritardando, ritanuta, come back to a tempo, you know exactly which pulse uh, you take, how much speed you add, how much speed you take back. Otherwise, if you are even slightly confused and not sure about timing and tempo, this simple thing will still create that will still create tension in your body, preventing you from free expression in your playing. Um, again, we're talking about releasing tension while playing, and you might say, okay, how timing can be even remotely connected to tension in the body? But a feeling in a pulsation prepares our body to execute all the movements and in sensation in time we need to play. And if we don't feel this heartbeat before we start playing a certain part, if it's slower part or a little bit faster part, um, you know, <laughs> it uh, you will feel clumsy because you're not you're not ready. <laughs> so uh, so this is like a very exact example of how I feel changes of time throughout uh, the whole piece, I really um, take the pulse by quarters, by crochets, and I feel it in the calm tempo, or animated, or exciting, or energetic tempo, and in the certain bars, I change this pulse inside me, and um, doesn't, it feels so natural, <laughs> it feels so good. So, um, um, Timing is really important, and just for the future, even if you need to, you know, Manamosa doesn't say anything to us, just uh, a little bit less, a little bit slower, but we have to really understand, we really have to really feel it inside out, what that really means, and so timing really helps with this. So when you... Uh, when you feel this pulse following the crotches, and you feel it in exciting, and then you feel it too animated, and you feel it again exciting, and you feel again animated, then then again you know <laughs> exciting, <laughs> and again animated, then then energetic, and then I really like the last trio because you go from energetic, the next bar is exciting, the next bar the next bar is animated, and then you go to calm. So to feel this pulse in the trio. Is so helpful. Um, otherwise, nothing will work. <laughs> okay, mm, so I I think that's enough for today, and um, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.